So the diagnostic pathway is the same for all of the neurological illness. So there's a good history that's done where the clinician is looking for features on history that suggest that there's a functional disorder at play. So things like an acute onset or abrupt onset of symptoms, symptoms that wax and wane over time, the rapid accumulation of many symptoms as opposed to true progression of any one single symptom. Those are some of the features that, that we see. A good physical exam. And the most important thing is a clinician has to be thinking about FND to be now doing positive signs to rule in the diagnosis. So these are things like a Hoover sign, things like tremor distractibility, augmentation of symptoms with attention, entrainment of tremor, for example. Really at the heart of many of these is the feature that the functional symptom inherently is changeable. So it's present in some contexts and not in others. So somebody might, for example, have weakness in a leg and you know, be able to, they're impaired when they walk into the room, they're dragging their leg behind them. But then if you get them to transfer from the chair onto the bed in the examining room, their gait's actually normal during that time. So you already you can kind of see that the symptom is changing like this, okay? So that's a really strong positive sign that suggests a problem with the function and not a problem with the structure. And then the diagnosis is given to the patient. This can be done at the bedside. It's a clinical diagnosis. And then very often the triggering, um, the triggers that, that will bring on a functional syndrome can be neurological disease as well. So the clinician might have to undertake investigations to rule out the presence of any comorbid other neurological illness. So for example, MRI, doing EEG, some blood tests as well. And that's really not to rule out FND, but it's rather to rule in other disease that could be acting as a perpetuating factor as well.